The female anatomy is one of the many beautiful wonders of biological sciences. More remarkable is the female reproductive organ, whose function includes releasing eggs that can potentially be fertilized by sperm to form a zygote, producing and regulating female sex hormones such as progesterone and estrogen, providing a home for a fertilized egg to develop during the course of pregnancy and facilitating labor and childbirth. The female reproductive organ consists of the vulva, vagina, uterus, fallopian tube, and the ovaries. All the special parts of the woman's reproductive organs ensure a quality, reproductive, and sexual well-being of a woman. However, some anomalies affect the smooth operation of the female reproductive organs. One of such is endometriosis. Okay, endometriosis is a long-term chronic disorder that is estrogen dependent. What do I mean estrogen dependent? Uh, it's basically a disorder that happens to women in their reproductive age. A man cannot get endometriosis, like I said earlier. And uh, my grandmother in the village cannot have endometriosis. It's a chronic estrogen dependent disorder. Looking at a woman, a woman has a womb. And if you look at the womb, there are three parts of the womb. We have the inner part, that the inner layer. That's the part that is being uh, shedded every month in form of messes. Then we have the middle part, which is the second part, which is com comprises of muscles. We call it the muscular layer. Then we have the outer parts. So those are the three parts of a womb. Now, the inner part of a womb is supposed to be there. But when you now have instances, when you now have that inner layer that's supposed to be inside the womb, both the stroma of it and the gland. When you now find it outside the womb itself, so you can find it in the tubes, you can find it in the ovary, but outside that womb, that is what we call endometriosis. Endo from the word inner, metrosis that you are finding outside. So when you now have that inner layer of the, uh, the tissues, the glands and the stroma of that inner layer of the womb, you are now finding it somewhere else. Apart from where it's originally supposed to be, we call it endometriosis wherever you find it. Endometriosis tissues grow in response in the proliferating phase of the menstrual cycle and stabilizes in the progestogenic phase. During the menstrual phase, when progesterone is withdrawn, endometriotic tissues break down, unlike the healthy endometriotic tissues which leaves the body during menstruation. Cells that die during endometriosis lesions trigger an inflammatory response and other activated inflammatory cells secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines, growth factors, adhesion molecules and nerve sensitization factors into the microenvironment of endometriotic lesions. A repeated cycle of this inflammatory process induces new vascularization, nerve sensitization and a formation of pelvic adhesion and fibrosis. This causes severe bleeding pains and bloating. This repeated cycle of pain triggers back pain in the spinal cord, bladder pains and painful sex. When I reached 27 years old, I was officially diagnosed with endometriosis. I started my menstrual cycle when I was nine years old. I was in the third grade, not even really understanding what a period is. I just wanted to go outside and play with the rest of my friends. As time went on, I dealt with heavy, heavy, heavy bleeding, really bad menstrual cramps. I thought something was wrong in my 20s. I started experiencing really bad leg pain. I was extremely nauseous, really dizzy, couldn't drive. For endometriosis, you get to suspect that this person has endometriosis if their periods, their monthly menstrual period, gets to be very painful, okay? Now, you also suspect that if sexual intercourse is painful, they have chronic pelvic pain that lasts for a long time, okay? All during their cycles, monthly cycles, or at various points in every month, they can have painful defecation. Some of them can even be having chest pain. Especially if you have find them in the, within the lungs. Some of them can even be covered blood. But you find out that all those symptoms, they will come during the menses of that woman. 
But once the message stops, those symptoms will also stop. That's what I give it away because there are some other things that can cause some of those, you know, blood in urine too, blood in stool, somebody coughing blood, there are other causes. But that's what gives it away. The one with endometriosis is also associated with only doing the message. Once the message goes, at times some people they have it on their navel, like a node like this, dark like that. Presentation is variable. It's variable. Okay? Some it doesn't. For some it does. Okay. I know somebody now with endometriosis that just delivered. Alright? So for some and she conceived spontaneously. But for some it does. So that's why I said that the presentation is variable. You cannot say, okay, you have endometriosis, therefore I am not you will not be able to conceive. Some have it and they have conceived. And for those that are not able to, of course there are various other, technology has helped us a lot. So there are various other ways that we can assist them, you know, get pregnant. The treatment for endometriosis can be either medical or surgical. Medical treatment depending on what the problem of the woman is. Okay, if it is pain, you can start on pain medications. Okay. And then you can also use some hormonal drugs. But what those hormonal drugs do, they suppress the ovarian function. So for a woman that wants fertility, that will not be the right thing to do. Okay? So you can give some of these drugs for a period of time. Okay? You can use the combined oral contraceptive pills. You can use um, drugs, progesterone acid. There's various drugs. Okay? And then we can go via surgery as well. Laparoscopy, where we see this um, endometriotic deposit, it can be burnt out, it can be cut off, all right? So the adhesions that I talked about can be relieved, okay? And then, you know, was down, down, down over there, we can take off, take off the uterus, plus or minus the tubes, like I said, depending on this woman's presentation and desire for fertility. Uh, we want to encourage anybody that has those symptoms that I've just mentioned now, especially the typical symptoms, the lower back pain, you know, the, the lower abdominal pain, the back pain that wasn't with, uh, what's it called, uh, messes, they should quickly seek for medical attention. See, in this, part, in this part of the world, we wait until the thing has gone so bad. And because by the time you leave it, repeated menstruation, you know, menstruation inside, you know, lysing the blood, it causes some fibrosis, some thickening, everything matter together. So let us cultivate the habit of seeking uh, what's it called now? medical attention as early as possible.